Welcome back. It's Lionel, your tech lead and partner at Westfall. And I'm doing the next eight reasons why I love the E2 framework. So back to my Together app that I built earlier. I just put the E uh, brand over there. Reason number eight is Active Record. Now, if you guys don't know what Active Record is, Active Record is basically a ORM. So a object relationship model of the database. What this means, right, is that you don't actually have to go and write SQL. That's fantastic, right? So to give you an idea of what that is, here I've again got my building list. I think tickets, right, that I created from the last video. A bunch of dummy data over here, right? And let's take a look of how I actually displayed all these rows here. I actually went over and displayed this, these roles inside buildings. I think tickets, right? Tickets are uh, here. Okay. Index. Uh, this is our little crude controller. Uh, this is the MVC of the group. And I'm just saying search tickets, search using a bunch of parameters. Let's take a look at what search tickets look like. So here, search tickets extends tickets, which is our ORM. It has a bunch of rules to uh, basically tell us what is filtering in there and here right this handles all the filtering right using the powerful active record active data uh, provider active record and here you can just simply write things as simple as and filter where based on a key and a value and that's just how simple it is to actually filter your information you don't have to write sql Anymore, you don't have to write. You know, I think the days something like select, select star from blah blah where variables. This is all handled using this very simple object relationship model and ID filter, uh, unit from name title. And if you use the filter, right, it means that if this variable is not set it will not activate. So it's a null checker. This is so fantastic. It's so powerful. You can see the structure of how everything's called, right? We have tickets, we have find, meaning it starts looking for it. And then we run a bunch of uh, variables using the where. And then you can also do things like one or um, all. So you can actually see a query that, let's take, let's take a look if we can find a query over here. Uh, okay, let's just say query. Yeah, let's imagine this is the tickets, right? And you run a filter, you can just run one or a model all. Very similar to Laravel, it just makes doing the database so easy. So active record or um, the query builder is what is really simple and you don't have to learn any um, SQL. You don't have to learn materials here. So if it's, uh, if it's a new record, maybe you leave it empty. We also have a couple of um, what you call um, triggered actions. So a triggered action is something like, uh, for example, you want to go before save, you want to do some transformation of the variables or you want to return some of this it's all inside the model so you don't actually have to resort back to uh, SQL okay next number seven authentication of the box I really love this thing about um, E2 is that when you download the standard template right it already has authentication of the box meaning that you'll actually see this thing happening over here when you log in, the authentication, what it does is that it just builds on the model class uh, of user that we just saw previously, and it extends a uh, user using an identity and runs several uh, functions inside it. But what's great about this is that you can start coding up your application and actually have um, a whole bunch of functions available for you to access the authentication model. So you can do something very really simple, like basically log in with a password, set it back with some static passwords, uh, authentication package that's already set up. Uh, add some simple uses inside it in terms of access tokens, uh, username, 
searching by username and you just have to hook it up. It's a little bit, uh, there's some configuration required, but it's going to save you so much time. I've seen people struggle uh, doing authentication, especially if you forget your password. That is all here. You know, if, you, if you're logging in, they've already got the remember me, they've got uh, password uh, recovery, all that flow through is all there. Follow the standard template, the basic, it'll already come with this. It'll come with a static uh, username login access. So you'll be able to go into your users and actually create users here. Uh, you could possibly uh, run that as a static file and import them there. You can turn it into a database uh, and then just modify some of these things instead of static, find identity, run a query, run model uh, find like we did in, last, uh, in, the, in the last item. So very, very easy to do this. I love the fact that I can start authenticating right off the bat. Usually what I do is I normally have it default and automatically logged in at the start. To, uh, and then I start coding with the user already logged in. And then later on, right, I either get somebody else or one of the, um, the other sub developers or my co-developers to work on authentication. So I can start working on the important stuff, which is the new features of a feature, uh, sorry, new feature of a project, and then come back later and then work on authentication, which, you know, basically everybody is quite familiar with lost passwords, uh, uh, what we call different levels, it can all happen there. You can see this, this is exactly how it's done. So really, really nice authentication out of the box. And then the last one, uh, 0.66 of this set is basically uh, ye debug. Ye debug, right, is a, this, I tell you, man, I love this feature so much. You will really be missing this when you switch to another framework, when you switch to some front end Node.js thing, let me take it. Let me show you how beautiful this is. So one of the big problems in developing uh, software is you need to inspect variables. Uh, you need to see. Let, let's say this is all wrong. You want to see what the query is. You want to see uh, if there's an error. The beautiful thing about this is you debug. Right here, there's a debugging panel, and it is so inclusive. It is like. I tell you, right, it is out of this world. When you, like, once you get used to this, you just can't get anything else. It looks beautiful. You can look at your variables that you want to dump in here. You can just write the dump variable. Uh, I think it's dump or something like that. And then this will appear here. You can look at your users, who's been logged in. Like, remember just now we talked about user authentication. What if you, you forgot or oh, it's a different user? Uh, you can look at your mail. Sometimes you, you write emails. It saves it in. I'll talk more about it, but really great here. Uh, events. You want to see what's happening after fine. Sometimes you want to inspect that. But here are some of the most beautiful things. One is the database. You This is so useful, right? It's unbelievably useful. And it comes with a filter, right? That you can actually filter your... Uh, your search. So here we have select from tickets here, and we can inspect that furthermore into the variables. We can actually see the amount of duration they are using, what's happening, how the queries are running. If you, I made a mistake, you know, if I did something wrong, there will be a query there. Usually this kind of problem happens when um, you don't have a fatal query, but you have a query that uh, turns the wrong set, right? It's either too many or too little. Uh, you know, you're expecting 10 rows, you only get five, you want, you're wondering what happened. And let me tell you, right, it can get really complicated when you're running multiple chains of queries. This makes it so easy. You will see, right, a lot of other frameworks, especially the backend, frontend style thing, right, they don't provide this. They don't <laughs> provide this beautiful uh, UI uh, display of this. So debugging is just so hard. It's just impossible for us to take a look at all these things. And then when it comes to optimization, you've got this, you can start actually doing very basic optimization. Actually, it covers maybe more than 80% of whatever needs up. This, it just makes it so simple. The other one that happens is some logs. You want to run some logs, take a look at some of these things. 
uh, you want to check the uh, requests. I especially like checking sometimes the post and the get because uh, maybe you made a mistake, you, you named the variable wrongly, you can just jump in there, take a look at that. Files, you know, uploading files, which is so easy if you made a mistake. You don't have to dig through the code, you don't have to go and echo stuff. You will really find this debug thing like brilliant. It will be so fantastic. The other one that's very good is the session handler. You might have session variables that are floating around. It's all there. You just <laughs> click it, you take a look at it. Wow, you know? Some other stuff in the configurations just to make sure that, you know, maybe uh, some class is missing or something like that. You don't even have to do that. Just click it up here, take a look here, use the filter. It's beautiful UI. It's got all the calls here, the number of events, the bundles, the user ID. Just, I can tell you, this is one of the best features of E2, this debug uh, model. And the best part is you, when you run it in production, it just disappears. It doesn't even pop up, it doesn't even run, it won't be server intensive. When you see the competition, right, of other people in framework, and they don't have this, I, I just, you know, I start crying, okay? Because the, the amount of time you spend uh, working on this, right, without this debug, it's amazing. So number six is the debug panel. It is a fantastic feature. Uh, go and look at it. It comes right out of the box. It's hidden right aside, right over here. Set. I'm the tech lead, and that's the bottom line because the tech lead said so.